All right, guys. So today I'm going to review the um, sample problem. Okay, I think now you can hear me. All right, guys. So today I'm going to review the sample problem that we were doing in class uh, for chemistry, which was basically establishing a, a series of steps um, to solve uh, problems for a, a particular quantity, but when where we're kind of um, take all that we've learned so far about using scientific measurements and apply it to a single problem. So I'm actually going to go ahead and write down the problem, and then I'm going to write down some of the steps, and hopefully this will help you guys with what you guys need to do uh, for for um, the class. So let me acclimate myself. Um, one second. So let's go over some of the steps. The first is what I want to do. I want to go over some of the steps. And hopefully with those steps you guys can be set on working with the exercise. So the first step, according to your textbook, is to analyze the problem. It says, um, and the book says, the first step in solving a quantitative word problem is to read the problem carefully at least twice to analyze. So let's write down the first step. Steps in solving... Quantitative word problems. Okay. And steps in solving quantitative word problems. So step one is to analyze. And basically I'm going to sum it up and it says read each problem at least twice. Now we want to read it twice because there's always some sort of important information or important data that's given to you in those word problems. So I'm actually going to go ahead and read what the paragraph in your textbook says is page 51. It says, note, any important descriptive terms that clarify or add meaning to the problem, identify and list the data given in the problem. Also identify an unknown, the quantity you're looking, you're asked to find. So again, step one is to analyze. And it says the first step in solving a quantitative word problem is to read the problem carefully at least twice and to analyze the information in it. So again, what you're going to do is you're going to read the problem and write down any important data. Um, what's given, what's being asked, and all that is really important because it'll give relevance to what we're doing. Second step says plan. So once I've read the problem, once I've analyzed it, once I've um, um, once I've analyzed the problem, once I've read it, uh, the next thing is to plan. How am I going to solve it? So it says the second step is to develop a plan for solving the problem. The plan should show how the information given is to be used to find the unknown in the process. Reread the problem to make sure you have gathered all of the necessary information. It is often helpful to draw a picture that represents the problem. For example, if you were asked to determine the volume of crystal given its diameter, you could draw a representation of the crystal and label the dimension. This drawing would help you visualize the problem. So what we want to do in the second part is to find or use an effective strategy strategy that can help uh, an effective strategy that can help find a solution sometimes 
drawing might help. So this is used a lot, especially if we're working with physics or we're working with density and all these other things. So this this is this would help out a lot. So one, we read the problem, we write down the information. Two is we plan how we're going to solve it. It's kind of like when you're working in math and really basic math with like um, adding or subtracting. You you see okay, so the word says the sum, so that means I have to add. So it's just kind of to write down uh, drawings or those key things that could help you guys out. Um, Three says to solve. The third step involves substituting the data and necessary conversion factors into the plan you have developed. So let me let me write that down. Solve. The third step. And this means to substitute the data and necessary conversion and necessary conversion solve it's a substitute the necessary data and conversion factors into the plan you have developed have developed And four is to check your work and to examine your answer to determine whether it is reasonable. Use the following methods when, appro uh, when appropriate to carry out the evaluation. Check to see that the units are correct. Uh, make an estimate of the expected answer and check the order of magnitude in your answer. So our last step is to check to verify that everything makes sense and we're going to see that real quick in the next example is to check now i'm actually going to see if i can accommodate these four steps onto this side so that way when we start working with the problem itself i can you guys can see what we're going to do so let's go to page 52 of your textbook and let's look at the at the story problem that you have, okay? So page 52 says, calculate the volume of a sample of aluminum of a sample of aluminum with a mass, a mass of, three, of um, 3.057 kilograms and a density of 2.0. 0 0.70 grams over uh, centimeters cubed. Centimeters, and let's see if I can use this button here, cubed. Okay, so it says calculate the volume of a sample of aluminum which has a mass of 3.057 kilograms and a, with, I'm sorry, I misspelled this here, with 3.057 says calculate the the volume of a sample of aluminum that has a mass of 3.057 kilograms and the density and the density the density I'm sorry for the typo is 2.7 or 2.70 grams over centimeters cubed. And so now, again, what we did was we read it. We read the problem, right? We, we, we read and we analyze. And it's good to know to write down here what we have and what we don't have. So we have the mass, which equals 
3.057 grams. We have the density, which equals 2.7 or 2.70 grams over centimeters cubed. And our unknown is the volume, or what we're looking for is the volume, okay? So now that I have this, now that I have this, I know what I'm, or I have an idea of what I need to do. So I know that I have the mass, I know that I have the density, and I know that I'm looking for the volume. So the next step is to plan. Now that I've read it, now the next step is to plan. What do I need to do? And it says to use an effective strategy. Well, I know two things. I know there's a formula that helps me calculate density, and that formula is D equals, or density equals mass over volume, which means... that which means that this formula is definitely going to help me uh, or fit in what I have or rather I know that the units that I have I can fit into this formula because I have density I have mass and I don't have volume but I know that it's here so I can solve for volume so that I know that that is definitely going to be part of it but there's still something else I have the density given to me in grams, and this is actually given to me in kilograms. So the mass is given to me in kilograms. And I just realized that I, I, I just realized that I wrote grams here, and it's not grams, it's kilograms. So I know that the mass is given to me in kilograms, and I need to have it in grams. So I know that I have a formula. I know that I have the mass in kilograms. So I know that I have to change the mass of kilograms to grams. And I know that there's a conversion factor which says that one kilogram, one kilogram equals a thousand grams, equals a thousand grams. And I also know that a thousand grams equals one kilogram. So what I'm trying to say with this is that I can just write it upside down. So one thousand grams equals one kilogram, or one kilogram equals a thousand grams, and that we're gonna pick one of these two. Or when I mean one of these two is depending on what I have and what I want. So I know I have my mass in kilograms and I have to cancel out kilograms with kilograms. So what you can do is write it down here, 3.07, excuse me, 0.57 kilograms. And this is what I have, and what I want it is in grams. So to change it to grams, I have to cancel kilograms with kilograms, which means I need to have the kilograms as my denominator, which means I'm going to use this conversion factor because it has kilograms in my denominator, which helps me cancel out my units. So one kilogram... equals a thousand grams which means that my units are going to cancel out my kilograms cancels out with kilograms and then all I have to do is just multiply 3.057 times 1000 which is going to be 3057 grams so 3000 and 57 grams. So I actually went into my third step real quick. Okay. My third step was 
to solve. I know my first step was to read the problem, which I did, and to write down the information that I have and when being asked. The second is to determine what I need to do. Well, I know I need to use the formula for density, which is mass over volume, and I know that I have to convert my 3.057 kilograms to grams. So my third step, okay, let me just label this down. This would be my second step here, which is just determining what to do. And my third step, which is what I started doing, is solving. So I know that I have to use the density formula. I know that I have to convert from kilograms to grams. Third step is to just do it. And I do that by using a conversion factor and I have 3.057 kilograms. And I use this conversion factor here, which is the second one, the one that has the black squiggly lines. So I can cancel out my units. So kilograms cancels with kilograms. And um, I multiply 3.057 by 1,000, which gives me 3.057 grams. But now all I have to do is substitute, right? So the formula says D equals mass over volume. So the D is 2.7. Let me see if I can actually write it here. So instead of writing, let me see where I can, I think I can manage to, okay, so I'm going to erase this. Okay, so I'm going to erase this to have some extra space and not clutter everything up. Remember that we just multiplied 3.057 by 1,000, and that's where I got the 3,057 from. So I'm actually going to go ahead and erase this part here, and then we're going to start working with the, or to find the volume. So in order for me to find the volume, now that my mass is in kilograms, all I need to do is plug them in. And I know that the density is given to me. It's 2.7. So I'm going to say, or 2.70. So instead of writing D, I write 2.70. 2.70. Of course, grams over centimeters cubed. And that equals the mass which is 3,057 grams. And I need to find the volume. And I need to find the volume, okay? So let me erase this here. Okay, so again, all I did is I plugged them into the formula. I have my density, which is given to me here, 2.70 grams over milliliters. I have my mass, which I changed, and it's now 3,057 grams, and I'm looking for my volume. Let me just write that mass, we converted it to 3,057 grams. 3,000 is so we know, so you guys have an idea of what I did. And I'm going to actually re-explain it just to make sure that no one is have has any issues or we're good. All right. Again, I did. I, I just converted my 3.57 kilograms into grams, which is what I did a minute ago. And here's my answer. I have my density, which is 2.70 um, grams over centimeters cubed. And now I need to find volume. No, I was explaining in class that there's a proportion, which means that technically this 2.70 is a rational number. So I just write it over one and then I just cross multiply. I cross multiply one times 3057 and 2.70 times V. And this is going to be, and let's see if I can just kind of do it on this side. This is the continuation of the problem, guys. So 2.70 times V is 2.70 V. 2.70 V. Grams. I'm keeping the units just so you guys know. But if you write 2.70 V without the units, it's not necessarily wrong. V equals 3,057 grams because any number multiplied by one is itself. So 3,057 grams. 
3057 grams. So what I'm going to do now is to solve for V, I'm going to divide everything by 3057 grams. And I'm going to keep my units just to show you how the units cancel out. It's not something, at least I'm not really picky with uh, you keeping the units all through the process. Uh, at, as long as you have the the correct units um, at the end, um, that's fine. Okay. Sorry. I just did it the other way around. I'm sorry. I'm actually going to divide the 2.50, the 2.7. And I'm going to keep my units just so you guys know what's happening. Okay. So I'm going to keep 2.7 grams over centimeters cubed. Okay. And we're going to divide that grams over centimeters cubed. And do the same thing here, 2.70 grams over centimeters cubed. Now, what's going to happen here is this is all going to cancel out, of course. And I have V. And then I'm going to cancel out here the grams and the grams. And if you divide 3057 by 2.70, let's see if I can write that better because it doesn't really look. It looks like 270. Let me see if I can write that down. Uh, 2.70, guys. Give me one sec. Here we go. So 2.70. 0. 2.70. So this is going to equal to um, 100 or 1,000. I'm sorry. 1,100, if you divide that, I believe it's 1,113. Let me just double check to make sure that I'm not making this up. 3,057 divided by one, I'm sorry, by 2.70 is 1,132, excuse me, 1,132. Point two centimeters cubed, and I do the line because I, I wrote this little line or tick mark because remember it's point two 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 two, and this just means that it extends infinitely, right? That it's a repeating decimal. Now that it extends infinitely, I'm sorry, that it's a repeating decimal. So technically, that's it. That's the end of my problem, but. My fourth step when solving these problems is to verify or check my answer. And one very important thing that I need to realize is the significant figures. So if I look at 2.70 right here, I have three significant figures, one, two, three. And if I look at 3.057, I have four significant digits. Now, whenever we're working with quantities, we want to make sure that our significant digits are equal to the number of uh, to the term that has the least amount of significant digits. And what that means is if um, 2.70 has three significant digits and 3057 has four, that means I'm going to keep my answer at three significant digits and I have to round. So 1,132 has to be rounded or has to, has to be turned or made in a way that has three significant digits. So that means I'm going to move the decimal point until I reach the last two significant digits, which would be between the one and the three. So I move this once, twice, I'm sorry, between the one and the one, and three times. So that means that the significant digits will be one point, point, one, three, because... Well, next to the three, there's a two, so I don't round that up. And because I only need three significant digits and I move my decimal place three times, I say times 10 to the power of three centimeters cubed. Let's see if I have enough space here. Centimeters cubed. 
All right, guys, so this is it for this video lesson. I hope that this video is helpful. And if you guys have any questions, you know where to find me. So please enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in our next class. Bye-bye.